Something big happened last week that really caught our attention. Google's YouTube, which you're probably watching this video on, no longer restricts discussion about election integrity. And that's one of our favorite topics. As one of the US's preeminent pollsters, pretty much the only one who actually polls on this topic, we thought it would be a great time to go into our archives and dust off our old work. All of it. So join us as we take a look at 2020 and watch like a slow motion train wreck as Americans lose faith in their electoral system. Our story actually begins in the heady days of January 2020. America was riding high on an economic wave brought by the years of the Trump administration. The Mueller report was released a mere 10 months ago and it looked like Trump's Russia problems were largely behind him. Unfortunately, an unknown virus of unspecified origins was starting to make its way around the globe. At the time, we decided to kick off the election season with this unassuming little question set as a baseline. Are American elections fair to voters? 50% of US likely voters said yes, but 35% said no. 15% weren't sure. A stunningly low number, but where was this signal coming from? Turns out it's Democrats. Only 32% of them said elections were fair, probably because Trump was the president, and CNN and MSNBC were blasting wall-to-wall -wall Russiagate coverage. But this one's even worse. The Declaration of Independence says the governments derive their authority from the consent of the governed. Does the federal government today have the consent of the governed? Only 26% say yes, and 54% say no. That's a pretty bleak response, and all party affiliations said no more than yes. Though again, Republicans were closest. Though still, 44% of them said no. Democrats and independents said no more than yes by almost a three to one margin. These numbers are almost undoubtedly low because of America's overall dim view of Congress. And I suspect if a Democrat was in office, we would see the Republican and Democrat numbers pretty much just flip. Over the next few months, COVID hit really big and we immediately responded with this question set about mail-in ballots. It was pretty clear to us early on that mail-in ballots would have some political ramifications, let's just say. And voters pretty overwhelmingly favored mail-in ballots, 64% to 27%. And of course, keep in mind that this wasn't too long after videos of body bags lying in the streets and chirons of the increasing number of virus fatalities emblazoned on every TV. Democrats were most in favor, 80% to 16%, but a plurality of Republicans also favored mail-in voting, 48% to 43%. That wasn't the whole question set, however. We at Rasmussen Reports had some sneaking suspicions about mail-in ballots. How concerned are you that increased use of voting by mail will lead to more voter fraud? 58% were concerned at the time, again, April 2020, but only 36% were very concerned. Republicans were far more concerned than everyone else, 78%, and 55% of them were very concerned. Clearly there was some suspicion here after experiencing everything that was thrown at Trump for four years. In fact, 94% of Trump's strong approvers were concerned about mail-in election fraud, and 76% of them were very concerned. Again, this is barely a month into what people would consider the full-on pandemic. And in retrospect, they were probably right to be a little concerned because the gears were already turning. Gears like the authorization of the biggest purchase in the world of ballot stuffing equipment by a private election printing company in Arizona. Of course, the unsolicited mailing of mail-in ballots in America was illegal at the time. The time, by the way, which was March 1st, only one day after the first officially declared COVID death in the United States. How did they know? The purchases were conducted April 14th and 15th, by the way, which by a stunning coincidence happened to be the very same days we were in the field with this set of questions. We gave election fraud a bit of a break during most of the campaign season, but a month before the election, we asked this, and Americans were basically split on whether voting is too easy or too hard in the United States. The party numbers show that the concept that elections are too hard to vote in is largely a Democrat thing most likely pertaining to deeply internalized beliefs that black voters are being disenfranchised. Though black voters don't really share that belief to the same extent, Hispanic voters, however, overwhelmingly are the most likely to think that elections are too easy to vote in. That's a pretty stunning finding, isn't it? 
said that voter ID laws do not discriminate against some voters, but 31% said yes. And again, it's mostly a Democrat thing. Democrats are split on whether voter IDs are discriminatory, but Republicans say no by well over a four to one margin. Independents say no by a two to one margin, and only 42% of black voters, less than Democrats, say that voter ID laws discriminate. Election night came really fast, and Democrats were projecting the whole time that we'd have to suffer a really long wait to see who won. And meanwhile, Republicans were watching this. This is a big development. Yeah. The Fox News Decision Desk is calling Arizona for Joe Biden. That is a big get for the Biden campaign. After the election, we gave the concept of election integrity a bit of a rest. But as pollsters who directionally, correctly predicted a Biden popular vote win, we were incredibly surprised by the unfathomably large margin that he won by. It was a total surprise. And some of the stuff we saw in swing states just absolutely stunk. Here's looking at you, Pennsylvania. But as a result, voter fraud bounced to the top of our favorite topic list. In December, just a month after the 2020 election, we were mostly interested in the court challenges, and 36% of likely voters said it was likely that court challenges would result in a Trump re-election, but 59% said it wasn't likely, 43% of whom said not at all likely. Republicans were most optimistic, 57%, a majority, thought it was actually likely, but 40% didn't. Democrats and independents pretty confidently disagreed. But a quarter of Democrats did think it was at least somewhat possible that Biden's victory could get overturned. But were the court cases driven by legitimate fraud concerns? 43% of voters said yes, but 50% said they were just trying to delay Biden's victory. Lots of questions about the 2020 election were circling by that time, like how Biden won while losing almost all the bellwethers, or how he massively outperformed past Democrats while also losing more counties overall. And as a result, 73%, almost three in four Republicans, said that these court cases had merit, and only 21% said no. The Democrat numbers were basically the reverse of Republicans, but 20% of Democrats and 39% of independents said that there was some justification for these court challenges. But take a look at that Democrat number though. 76% of them thought that these cases were delay tactics. Presumably, many more Democrats than that actually voted for Biden, but that 76% number is roughly the ceiling of his Democrat approval number throughout all of his presidency, at least so far. It's reasonable to conclude that the manner of Joe Biden's victory gave about 20% of Democrats the shove they needed right out of the gate to not support him. And he did start office with the lowest job approval rating of any president we've ever tracked. A lot of stuff happened in the next month or two, which is probably the understatement of the video. But once Joe Biden got settled into office, we decided to dig election integrity back up. But this time we attacked it directly. Did Joe Biden win the 2020 presidential election fairly? 57% said yes, but 34% said no. And another 8% weren't sure. It's easy to be cynical and wonder why the number is only 34%. But the bar for this kind of question is very high. There aren't any somewhats or likelies here. Did Biden cheat? Yes, no. This is barely three weeks after the inauguration and a stunning one third of the electorate flat out said that Biden did not win fairly. Democrats almost unanimously declared that Biden did win fairly, but 36% of independents and a pretty incredible 61% of Republicans said no. And only 28% of Republicans said yes, which is pretty incredible because all of this stuff was suppressed. There was nothing allowed on mainstream news except for the most secure election in history narrative. But back to mail-in voting. 52% of voters said that the mail-in ballots worked for the most part, but 42% said that they led to unprecedented voter fraud. And of course the Democrat numbers are again almost unanimous, though about 6% now say that the mail-in ballots did have problems, but it didn't mean that Joe Biden cheated or anything. 70% of Republicans say there was unprecedented fraud, even though only 61% say Biden didn't win fairly. See what I mean about the high bar of the previous question? Independents are actually essentially split on this. But keep an eye on the independents. They're going to have their minds made up in a major way over the coming year. And also note that previously, less than a year prior, 64% said they supported mail-in ballots. 
but now only 52% of likely voters said that they worked well. But let's take a moment to see how authoritarian people got about questioning the results of the 2020 election. That was a pretty big thing right after the Capitol riots, by the way. 35% of voters said that public figures should be punished for saying the 2020 election was stolen. Only 54% of Americans said no, First Amendment be damned. Isn't that result surprising? But there was essentially a jackboot on the throat of anyone who questioned the 2020 outcome back then. And keep in mind, we were polling on this topic the entire time. In fact, it actually got us tagged as number 42 on a list of 10,000 biggest spreaders of election misinformation on Twitter. We're pretty proud of that. A majority, 54% of Democrats, wanted public officials to be punished for exercising their First Amendment protected rights of free speech, and only 32% of them defended it. Independents pretty appreciably defended free speech on this issue, and Republicans, of course, disagreed, but not as much as you would hope or think. But 68% of Biden's strong approvers wanted election deniers punished, and only 21% said no. We went ahead and dusted off one of our old mail-in ballot questions in April and found that the COVID mail-in ballot fiesta had quite an impression on public opinion. 34% now said that elections are too easy to vote in, up from 28% just six months prior, and 22% said too hard, down from 27%. So too easy picked up a total of 11 points over the course of just one election. And this is a pretty deep philosophical question, one that you wouldn't expect to swing easily. Of course, the numbers were driven by Republicans mostly, but even Democrats moved in the too easy direction. Now here's an even more important philosophical question, one that I think fundamentally describes the difference between the left and the right on election integrity. 37% of voters say it's more important to make it easier for everyone to vote, but 60% say it's more important to make sure there's no cheating in elections. Republicans almost unanimously think it's more important to prevent cheating, and notice by even a bigger signal than whether Republicans said Biden won fairly. 83% of them say we need to stop cheating, and only 15% of Republicans say we need to make it easier to vote. But Democrats are starkly different. 61% say we need to make it easier to vote, and only 36% say prevent cheating. Independents are much closer to Republicans than Democrats on this one, meaning this sentiment is pretty fundamentally a progressive concept. We checked into photo IDs again as well, and these results are five points closer together. 29% say photo IDs discriminate, down from 31%, and 62% say no, up from 59%. Republicans and independents overwhelmingly say no, but a plurality of Democrats say yes. For them, this represents a swing towards saying they discriminate from the numbers six months prior, but independents and Republicans are much more likely to now say no. Now let's take a moment to stretch, pinch yourself, get up, walk around, because the next one's a big one. And also, while you're at it, why don't you take a moment and like our video and subscribe on YouTube. Election integrity is a pretty new topic for YouTube, and there's a lot of lost ground to make up. With your help interacting with the video, yes, please leave a comment if you have the time. We can get this information in front of more people. And here's the big one. 51% of likely voters say it's at least somewhat likely that cheating affected the outcome of the 2020 presidential election. Only 44% say it isn't likely. Now clearly the bar is lower for this question than the one about whether Biden won fairly, but look at that 51% majority. Yeah, it blew our minds when we saw it too. But clearly it's just a flash in the pan. People are gonna lose interest in the 2020 election over time, right? Hold that thought. Three quarters of Republicans said it's likely, including 56% who said very likely. But a majority of independents agreed, and only 33% of independents say it's not at all likely. 30% of Democrats think it's at least somewhat likely cheating affected the outcome of the 2020 election, and a pretty paltry 51% said it wasn't likely at all. The spring and summer of 2021 rolled on, and people began unmasking, and businesses started opening up. And the electorate was blissfully unaware that the ill-fated Afghanistan withdrawal was just around the corner. Around that time, there was a lot of talk about audits. Audits, you know, that were never really done in force. 55% of voters supported audits of election results. This is in June of 2021, but incredibly, 29% opposed them and 17% abstained. Now, I don't like to pick sides on questions, but these results absolutely horrify me. 
I want to live in a country where 100% of voters want the results of elections audited. Next time we ask that question, I'm going to put it alongside a question about whether people would fly on an airline that doesn't have quality assurance audits. And again, it's pretty clearly a Democrat thing. The ideology numbers were a tad wider, so perhaps you can call it a right-left thing. Republicans pretty overwhelmingly support audits, but Democrats are split. Now this question isn't, should we do an audit on the 2020 election? It's just about elections in general, and only 38% of Democrats support audits. If you're a free-thinking Democrat watching this, I sincerely want to know your thoughts about what's driving this signal. Please leave your ideas in the comments. Is it because you infallibly trust government to get elections right? Perhaps because cheating's a taboo topic? Or perhaps because you know that you're benefiting from the cheating? Or is it because you like audits, but you don't mind putting them aside just this once to make sure that Trump gets defeated? For a little more color, only 27% of those who strongly approve of Joe Biden support election audits. Now the next question bucks the party trend that we've been seeing, at least a little bit. And keep in mind, this is probably around the height of people being called election deniers. And the mainstream news just hammered on about the big lie. 48% of voters say expressing doubt about the outcome of elections undermines democracy. And only 34% say no. This is a real poll, folks, in a country with constitutionally protected free speech. And for maybe the first time, Democrats aren't out there on their own on this one. They say yes by more than a two to one margin, but a plurality of Republicans say yes as well. And it's actually independents who are most willing to see election results publicly questioned. Keep in mind, Republicans had their own run in with this issue in the aftermath of 2016. And that'll help you understand their response perhaps a little bit better. I wonder what the results would be if we asked this question again today. Maybe I'll do that. And again, it's Biden's strong approvers continuing their march towards authoritarianism, who are most likely to say that questioning election outcomes undermines democracy by a 64% to 18% margin. That's three and a half to one. And I'm not kidding about authoritarianism either. COVID really messed with the left's head. Six months after these questions, we ran another poll testing COVID measures and a majority of buying strong approvers supported putting the unvaccinated in camps. They also supported imprisoning people who questioned the efficacy of vaccines. And even 31% of Biden's strong approvers wanted the unvaccinated's child custody taken away. But back to the June 2021 set, and now only 50% of voters said that Joe Biden won the 2020 presidential election fairly, down from 57, and 41% said no, up from 34% just four months prior. So public opinion swung a stunning 14 points in just four months towards Joe Biden not winning the election fairly. And this entire time, the news media and big tech was doing everything they could to suppress the heck out of this topic. Unless you think that it was Democrats driving the signal, no. It was Republicans and independents who were having their eyes opened. Independents moved 13 points to wind up basically split on whether Joe Biden won by cheating. Election integrity was a pretty hot topic in the summer of 2021, what with Mike Lindell's much teased conference around the corner. So we used that opportunity to ask if voters agreed or disagreed with this Donald Trump quote. Election reform must happen in swing states like Pennsylvania, Michigan, Georgia, Wisconsin, and Arizona, where voters have lost confidence in their electoral process. 61% of voters agreed with Donald Trump. 42% strongly, which again blew our minds since we even mentioned that it was a Donald Trump quote in the question. Only 34% of voters disagreed. Even 37% of Democrats openly agreed with Donald Trump on this, but nowhere near the 84% of Republicans and 63% of independents who agreed. So by this point, it's pretty clear that people are waking up to the possibility that there was widespread election fraud, despite essentially a complete press lockdown. And also, whether people thought Joe Biden won fairly or not, they were getting their first glimpse into what happened in the swing states, and they were not impressed. But luckily, Arizona Secretary of State Katie Hobbs saw these polling numbers and got fast to work reforming her state's election systems. So the month of Mike Lindell's Cybersecurity Symposium was finally here at last, 
And the right only had to wait two more weeks for those PCAPs. And we used that period of anticipation to ask this really packed question set on August 3rd. These are really great. 90% of voters told us that it's important to prevent cheating in elections, including 79% who said very important, and only 2% said not at all important. I think it's really important to pause and take note that this isn't about people on one side of the aisle or the other knowing about election fraud and ignoring it because they're benefiting. Americans really do hate election cheating, but the problem is that the rest of it are some really big devils in a whole lot of very complex details. Of course, now though I say that, it is Democrats who have less of an anti-cheating signal. But it isn't by much, and it could be at least somewhat explained by their more deeply held belief that some voters continue to be disenfranchised. And in case you're wondering, Joe Biden's strong approvers don't like cheating either. 88% of them said it's very important to prevent cheating. So they're either lying or they think it didn't affect his election. We also asked voters if thinking that cheating affected the outcome of 2020 was a dangerous conspiracy theory, and 49% said yes, and only 36% said no, including 49% of Republicans. So despite the increasing buzz about audits and awareness of new evidence, you can see how deeply ingrained the mainstream narrative about election integrity really is. But back to photo IDs, and now a stunning 74% of voters say that photo IDs are a reasonable measure to protect elections, and only 19% say no. Even though the last time we asked if voter IDs were discriminatory, 31% said yes, and 59% said no. So either public opinion swung big, or some voters now think a little discrimination is okay if it helps increase election integrity. And 60% of voters think that opponents of photo ID laws just want to make it easier to cheat in elections. Only 29% disagree, and only 19% disagree strongly. And even half of Democrats agree with this one, even though a majority of Democrats usually say it's more important to make sure everyone can vote rather than to prevent cheating in elections. These are actually pretty stunning results on the whole, because most reasonable people don't like assigning negative motives when they answer questions. So most voters think that photo IDs aren't discriminatory, an overwhelming majority think it's a reasonable way to prevent cheating in elections, and a majority even think that opponents of photo IDs are just trying to cheat. That's a really big deal. Even minority voters, who presumably are the ones that Democrats are worried about when they oppose photo IDs, think by a majority that they're a reasonable measure to protect elections, just as much as white voters. And a majority of them even think that opponents of photo IDs are trying to cheat as well. So Afghanistan finally came and went, and Joe Biden's approval rate plunged. And we tabled election integrity questions for just a little bit. But in December, we re-asked how important it is to prevent cheatings in elections and got an even stronger result. But the big news was how much of a swing Democrats had in that time, going very anti-cheating to extremely anti-cheating, just as much as everyone else. We also asked about photo IDs again and found an even slightly stronger signal, 75% to 19% in favor. But here's a head scratcher. More people said yes than last time to whether Joe Biden won 2020 fairly, though the number was still down from the first time we asked that question. Now, this video is probably gonna have to be a two-parter. So I wanna end on a really good topic. And it turns out that this is just about the time that disclosures about Zuckerbucks were really starting to get people spun up so we took the opportunity to ask about them. And only 8% of voters said that Zuckerberg spending hundreds of millions of dollars to influence the outcome of 2020 was a good thing, but 70% said it was a bad thing. Our country is so politicized that we frankly never see responses this far apart anymore, showing that voters really do not like the influence of billionaires in elections. Even if their party is benefiting from them, 62% of Democrats said it was a bad thing, and only 12% said a good thing, which is a stunningly low number, even though it is still twice the Republican and Independent numbers. So maybe you should take your money, Mark Zuckerberg, and perhaps fix Meta, or maybe do some more policing of content on Instagram, because Democrats, by a 5 to 1 margin, don't want your money in elections. And among all voters, it's a 9 to 1 margin. Now, Americans have been talking about election fraud for over a year, and it was starting to have some pretty deep-seated effects on public opinion. Look at this swing. Way more voters now said it's important to prevent cheating in elections, and now only 32% say it's more important to make it easier to vote. For a non-specific theoretical question like this, it really is a huge move in public opinion. 
And what's crazy is that it came almost entirely from independents. In nine months, they moved 26 points towards preventing cheating in elections. This is probably the biggest swing of anything in this video. Despite the coordinated mainstream media info op, independents became very aware of the dangers of cheating in 2021. But to end on the big boom, again in just nine months, there was an even more epic swing in the number of voters who thought it was likely the outcome of the 2020 election was affected by cheating from 51% to a stunning 59%. And those who said it was not likely plummeted from 44% to 35%. That's a 17 point move in just nine months. Some of this was probably a slow burn over 2021, but unlike the last question, it was actually Democrats driving this move. 41% of them now said it was likely that cheating affected 2020, up from just 30% nine months prior, and only 38% said it was not at all likely, down from an incredibly high 51%. I bet you didn't expect to see that. 41% of Democrats saying it was likely that cheating affected the outcome of the 2020 election? Now, does anyone watching have any theories about why, specifically in late 2021, Democrats became very aware of the possibility that Joe Biden was installed, at least in part, through fraud. I really can't think of anything specific that happened. And so all I'm left with is that they had buyer's remorse after the absolute abysmal September, October, and November that Biden had in 2021. Post your theories in the YouTube comments. And if you appreciate all the work we did, asking these questions when no other pollster would, then please take a moment to like the video and subscribe to our channel on YouTube. It doesn't cost anything and all it takes is one click. We'd be happy to answer any questions you have, so please leave something in the comments, even if it's just a little thanks. Stand by for part two and thanks for watching.